Let's stand. We'll start with uh, uh, He Has Made Me Glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad, glad, glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad, glad, glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Let's go to see. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. glad, glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's sing Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Shout to the Lord. Abby and I have to put our clamps on for this one. So DJ will tell a couple of jokes while we're getting ready here. 
Do you know how long it is to go from there to here? <laughs> that's a long way. I got out of breath when I got here to the mic. That's not a joke. That's just the that's truth. Nice. <laughs> Good one. Thank but you. they laugh, so it served the same purpose. Yeah, didn't I, it? yeah, you do. Is everybody doing good this morning? Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. say anything else? I, you're speechless. I've never seen you speechless. Once a year. All right. Good morning. We're glad to see you this morning. What a beautiful day it is. Don't you love living in North Carolina? One day you don't know whether you can get on the roads or not and you don't know if there's any milk or bread in the stores. I love that. I, I don't know. Uh, ever since I can remember, everybody has milk and bread. Uh, as if it were going to get snowed in for a month. Yeah, it's fun. Our uh, Yankee friends just don't understand it, but it's fun. Right. We're glad all of you are here today. Lots of good things. Well, we'll begin with the Psalms 19, and it goes right with Shout to the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaim his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their world to the end of the world, their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and a circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the earth, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure. Enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant mourned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. And then our New Testament lesson comes from Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. 
It reminds us of how we are all bound and knit together as the family and the people of God. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For it is the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we're all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, The members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffers together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the bodies of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. May we pray. Our Father, we're thankful this day that we can come together. We're thankful that we are your body. We're thankful that we have need of each other. We're thankful that we are woven so together that your love permeates everything that we do. We're thankful that we can be your family. Now, we remember those this day who are hurting. We remember Paul, who was away at Duke with his sister. We remember Lizzie Griggs Fowler in the hospital even today. We remember others that continue to recuperate, and we remember others that are just simply alone. We pray that you would give us the wisdom and the strength to do what it is that we need to do, And we're thankful that we can. We remember our world this day, for it is still the world that you have made. It is the world that you pronounced your benediction upon. It is the world that you have given us. May we be good caretakers of it. And as we think of our own lives, the things that we must do and how we must do them, we pray your blessing. We pray your wisdom. We pray your guidance. But we rejoice this day that we are your family and you have made us one. And so we pray in the name of the one who is our Lord, who is our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So I'll join in singing, We Have Come Into His House. We have come into His house and gathered in His name to worship Him. We have
have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify His name and worship Him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify His name and worship Him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. we pray. Our Father, these are our gifts, but really they are yours. We have given them to you, but we give them back to you. For you have given us so very much. You have given us life. You have given us resources. You have given us abilities. You have given us talents. We're thankful that we can recognize that they all belong to you. And we know that you will bless these gifts, and they will be multiplied in your kingdom. They will provide for our children to learn. They will provide for others to learn. They will do the work of missions. They will help others do the work of missions. Bless them and multiply them. For We ask it in your loving and caring name. Amen. Long as life endures, 
my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, your mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my chains are gone, My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, your mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow The sun forbear to shine Though God who called me here below Will be forever mine you are forever mine. I don't need to say any more how talented we have I and mean, what talent are we have in our congregation. Thank you, Haley. How beautiful. We all work together. And we all have different talents. Wish that I could sing, but we know that that's not going to happen. Wish that I could dance, but we know that's not going to happen either. Wish that I could preach. Don't say anything. <laughs> We all have different talent and different abilities. And the amazing part of it all is that God uses everything that we have in his kingdom. And somehow, in some way, it just works together. And we're all impacted together. We're all affected together. One little thing makes a difference. One of the neat things is I was thinking of this sermon this week uh, about how we're just in it together. Uh, Wednesday was Monty Cosby's 101st birthday. Isn't that neat? It was Lauren's 33rd birthday and Evan Ramser's 10th birthday. So isn't it, that's a nice range of birthdays in our, in our church family. Uh, Lauren, being Lauren, she's not here, is she? Good. <laughs> Good, I can say it. Uh, she had decided that it would best since it was a Wednesday and that, that they were going to celebrate her birthday and eat at, uh, I think, Tsunamis. Uh, she did not consult with Ava. Because as she said, we're going to go eat. She says, I can't do that. I have to come to church. Because if I don't come to church, Mr. Robert will be very sad. <laughs> I have to see Mr. Robert. And I thought, well, isn't that the most wonderful thing? That how uh, uh, we are together. And the difference that we make so early in people's lives and how important it becomes to them. That's what we call family. And that's what we call church family. And that's what we're here. So Miles had to go pick up Bojangles on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> they may or may not have had birthday dinner yesterday. I didn't ask yet. Paul is using a beautiful analogy for us. When you think about our body, it is so amazing anyway, that it works. Uh, I would say it's a well-oiled machine, but then I hear my creaks. <laughs> it works together, and, and, and Paul, is, Paul writes with a little bit of humor here. Uh, he he uh, picks up this uh, uh, Arabic ideal of exaggeration, too. And he wants you to see the humor in it. Uh, 
One of the little things, one of the things that we know about children is, though, for some reason, until they become fairly old, they think that the world revolves around them. They usually think that until they're about 30 or 40. But, uh, uh, and, and you can understand how that happens, that the whole world revolves around them, and, and is, is their world, and welcome to it. Yeah. Paul is telling us uh, that that's not the attitude that we need, <laughs> that we grow and mature. In it. And he's just given us a very simple lesson in life. We need each other. To do the work of the church, we need all of us. And God has called us together for a purpose, and we have to discern amongst ourselves how do we do that purpose the best of our abilities. There is no doubt in my mind that God has given us everything that we need to do his work. He's given us each other. And he has given us enough ability, enough talent, enough everything to get it done. We just have to open ourselves to it. It's like the, uh, the, the preacher was doing the, uh, the stewardship campaign. He said, we've got enough money to fund these programs. That's the good news. The bad news is still in your billfold. God has given us what we need. Now, that was the, uh, the difference between two churches in the, in the New Testament. There's the churches at Jerusalem that just seem to always want to get something. Uh, their prayer, uh, it would appear, would be, uh, Lord, send us the gifts from all these other churches. And then there was a church at Antioch who said, Lord, what is it that you want us to do? And that church was always going out and doing something. That church was always using what it had and doing the work that God would have it. It's not, Lord, what do we need? It's, Lord, here's what we have. Help us to use it wisely. And that's faith. And so we have what we need. We just got to be about doing it. And I think we are. And we've got to remember in this process that everybody is important. Uh, this is not uh, Christianity self-esteem 101. No. Uh, but the root of the matter is so true. We need every person to do what they have and how they have in the kingdom of God. We need your passion and we need your compassion to get the work of the church done. We need your dream. We need your vision. We need your enthusiasm. Sometimes we, we, we make a bad mistake. We say, well, the least that you can do is pray. Well, maybe the most that you can do is pray. Prayer always should be in everything that we do and a part of everything. That we do. Prayer should be a way of living. It should be a way of doing. Yeah. We like Christmas prayers. What do I want for Christmas? This is what I want from God. But the prayer should be, Lord, help me. Help me to see. Help me to be. Help me to live. Help me to do those very things. And we do it how? We do it in community. Will Willimon, when he was the dean of the chapel at Duke, wrote a very interesting way. Will, Will Willimon can write a book a week. But that's another story. But uh, Willimon's a, a neat guy. And some of you have studied some of his books in Sunday school. Uh, Will, Willimon said uh, that Christians really, at the heart of the matter, ought not to even read the Bible by themselves. Well, that sounds <laughs> He's a Methodist, it doesn't matter. Uh, her heretical. But listen to what he's saying in the context of it. He's saying that we have to do everything in community and that we really understand our Christian life together. Uh, and, and when we read the Bible, we need to read it together because it keeps us from going out where on tangents. It keeps us from going out on a limb. It keeps us from going out in lots of places. Like Dr. Metzer used to say at school, he said, uh, a lot of people never get to the island of Patmos and some people never get off of it. Uh, so some people uh, pick and choose the Bible the way they want to. Some people, uh, it's always the end of the world, and some people just never 
look at the whole thing of life. Willimon just says, you're a community. And even reading the Bible needs to be done in community. That's what Bible study is about, where you bounce it off. That's a, uh, uh, I, I learn more sometimes from the Tuesday Bible study. Well, sometimes I learn more than I really want to learn. Uh, and and you got a, that group is quite an eclectic group. But I learn because of the experiences of others. I learn in how the word of Scripture has impacted their life. I learn at the shade of interpretation that they have brought to it. And I also have learned that as a 61-year-old, uh, my interpretation is different from what it was as a 22-year-old who knew everything. Because God has used the experiences of my life, and I think he uses the experiences of your life, to season us and let us see things in a different light. And that's the beauty of the scripture. There are so many different layers of it. There are so different, many different ways that it impacts us. And, and this is what Paul is saying in, in this scripture. We're, we are one body. There are spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters. We're all gifted. We're all blessed. A gift is just a blessing. A gift isn't an endowment. You have been endowed. Uh, we've been endowed with many different things. But God has given us things. And we have to use them. And he wants you to know about that. He, he wants you to know the things that matter. Your, our body is one. There are many members. But the members of this body, there are many. We are one. We are one because the spirit of God's love in Jesus Christ flows through us. So in spite of our uniqueness, in spite of our differences, in spite of all these other things, we are one because God's love is here. We can look different. We can act different. We can speak different. We can do all kinds of different things. But at the heart, we are related it's just like family, you know. Uh, family can really embarrass you sometimes. At least mine can. Uh, well, and I probably have embarrassed them too. So that's the purpose of parents, to embarrass their children. That's one of the great things that God has let us do. Uh, but they're still our family. They're still with us, and we have a bond that unites us that we cannot break. That's the way God's love is. God's love unites us. He has made us family. He has given us something that is there. He says there are varieties of these gifts, but we're all the same in one spirit. And then, he, if you foot says, I want to be in charge. What you gonna do? Or if your hand says, ah, I'm the, we all need to be a hand because hands are the best things. Well, we know that won't work. Paul's just being funny here. He wants you to ma imagine uh, the whole body is a big foot or a big hand or a big nose or a big ear. And that's a funny sight. Well, maybe not quite as funny now as it might have been then, but it's funny. And he said, what is absurd is that if any part of the body thinks that they are above the other. Because it all works together. We're more than a team. We are an entity. We are a being. And that's the church. And when the church is at its best, when the body is at its best, when it's working optimally, when it's getting all the blood, the oxygen, when it gets all the things that it needs, everything works well. When everything is contributing, and that's when the church is at its healthiest. When we recognize that every person's gift is important. When we recognize that every person's talent is God-given. When we recognize that everyone has something that they can do and we just must claim it. You see, being a church is not a spectator sport. This is not an arena. This is not a show. 
This is the family of God coming together to worship and try as best we can to search deep in our very soul, our very being, to see what is it that I can do? What is it that we can do? And how can I be a part of it? And when we discover that, we have discovered the essence of the faith. Now, what sin is, is sin saying that I'm more important than anybody else. When sin is, it's my way or the highway. Sin is when we think we don't need each other. Sin is when we try to inflict our will instead of God's will. And so we all have to be humble. And Elizabeth has reminded me that I'm learning humility this year because of my basketball team. And humble is not good sometimes. But it's a lesson that we have to apply to our lives. Paul's really saying, you know, if you want to be proud of something, be proud that God has loved you and everybody. Be proud that you have something that you can give and do. Be proud that you're a part of a family of love and light. Be proud that you know and practice grace. What is your talent? What is your gift? And how is it that you're using it in the kingdom of God? How is it that you're using it here as we seek together and seek different ways of doing it? These are the questions. And this is the task that God has for us. It's not what we need. We have what we need because we have each other. And God has already sent us the very things that we can do to accomplish his work and his will. We just have to open our hearts and our lives to that spirit. We are one. One in the spirit of love. One in the spirit of God. We are one family with our one Lord. Our Father... Help us to know just how we are related. Some of us here this day are related with family ties. But help us to realize that it is not some of us. It is all of us who are related here my family, because we are your family. We are one. In your loving, precious name, we do pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is, we have come into this house and we invite you to be a part of our family. We invite you to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. As we stand and sing. Come into this house and gather in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. Christ the Lord. We can be seated for a moment. I'll share with you the announcements. So we got a little bit of a few minutes. Unless you want me to preach a ten more minutes. All right. Uh, the, the team in red won the ball game last night. But the skies killed Carolina blue today. I said I was humble. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mark, Mark Clemens is the deacon of the week. He'll be doing the Old, Old, Old Testament reading in the uh, later service. Uh, 
Janu starting uh, tomorrow, no, the 27th. So, uh, night shelter, anything? Tonight, yeah, the night's the night. What's the, anything we need to know? We're good? We're good. What a wonderful ministry that w we do. And everybody that does that, uh, they know a blessing more than, uh, well, everybody's blessed. That's a period. Blood drive uh, is tomorrow from 4.30 to 6.30. You can sign up at church and, uh, today. Uh, anything about the Violent Times Banquet? Okay, get your ticket. It's going to be fun. All right, we're going to have a great time. Uh, there are a couple of the uh, Jewish congregation, Tipa Olorum. I never say that right. I've got to practice. Um, they have left free tickets to anybody that wants it for their Valentine's Banquet. Um, and I, their Valentine's Banquet is $20 tickets, so that's a good deal. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> so there's a few, uh, few tickets out front if you would like, uh, like that. Uh, the Children's Council, they got a trip to the Splash Planet in Charlotte. Boy, that sounds fun. Uh, Y'all see that announcement. Be that Stand Tall. I love this. Uh, that's going to be the, uh, the new exercise uh, program that we have for posture improvement. Makes me want to see me. Uh, that's going to be 11 and 11.45 on Thursdays in January and February right here. Uh, so uh, uh, come out. Ask for anybody. Uh, December financial statements are available. And if you have any questions, Harold's the answer man. <laughs> he, he does such a good job in making sure everything is right. Do you want to say something more about blood? No, you can say it again. You say it better. Tomorrow, to, today's my last day to remind you to come out for the blood drive tomorrow night. We will be in the fellowship hall instead of in here. And uh, it'll be from 4.30 to 6.30. So even if you haven't signed up, you can come between 4.30 and 6.30. But if you can sign up, We'd appreciate it. We already have five signed up, so we need more pints to help the community. Thank you. And next week is food on the first, so bring uh, non-perishable food items for the PLC and supplies for the PLC and for the Cabarrus, Co Cabarrus Cooperative Christian Ministries. So a wonderful thing. We know a total from last year yet. Over two times. Over two times. All right. I like over two tons. That's, that's 2,000 pounds of food. 4,000. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I, t I took, you know what, the, uh, this is wild. Back in, this, uh, in 69 at Carolina, uh, it was a strange place. No, I don't want to say that. Anyway, my math requirement was Latin. <laughs> so there, that explains a lot. If I'm not on the state, I could have figured that out. That is so true. <laughs> All right. 4,000 pounds, two tons. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, let's do 5,000, 6,000 this year. <laughs> All right. Anything else? So good to see you this morning. What a beautiful day. We're the Haiti mission trip tomorrow night, uh, 7.30. Another thing about my, my glasses aren't working well today either. 6.30, okay, good. I know it's in here. Bates will be a partner with him. Please contact. All right, it's tomorrow night. If you're going to go, uh, all ages. So. See Ronald. He'll be back a little bit. Good to see you. Y'all take care. Oh, I, I guess I should give the benediction. <laughs> Let's stand. And now we go from this place because we are the body of Christ. And by his love and his grace, he has given us the heart to go. He has given us the will to go. He has given us the way to go. So go and be his church. Go and share his love. Go and do his work. In the name of the Father who loves us all, in the name of the Son who has come to show us what love is, in the name of the Spirit that is truly love among us. Amen.
Thank you for joining us at McGill Baptist Church in Concord, North Carolina. That was our pastor, Dr. Steve Ayers, with the message this morning. Beautiful solo also by Haley Frazier and our music led by the Reverend Steve Harrell. McGill Baptist Church is located at 5300 Poplar Tent Road in Concord, North Carolina. That's right at the corner of George Lyles Parkway. It's exit six, excuse me, exit 54 off of I-85. You can get more information by calling the church at 704-788-1180. Go to our website, mcgillbaptist.org. Follow us on Facebook, and we also have a Twitter account as well. And again, thank you for joining us at McGill Baptist Church. We hope you had a pleasure from today's service.